The Golden Stocking Child by W. M. Cuppernow At the North Pole in the land of ice and snow, sometimes it gets minus 70 below. Santa Claus had just returned from his trip around the world, giving Christmas gifts to every good boy and girl. The elves were exhausted, the reindeer were too. Santa called them all into a meeting. Why? They did not have a clue. Tired elves and reindeer went up to the Claus castle. It was a successful trip, so no one knew what was the hassle. Hundreds of elves and reindeer gathered at Santa's place. All tried to appear jolly with tired looks on their face. Trumpets blared as Santa came out of the door. He had a huge smile on his face, much more than before. A microphone sat waiting on the snow-covered lawn. As the elves tried so hard to stay awake and struggled not to yawn, Santa's face then turned serious and in a booming voice, loud but not mild, Santa said, It's time to search the world for the golden stocking child. Everyone in Christmas Town had forgotten this event. Only every 100 years was a golden stocking sent. The absolute best child would be given this crown and be offered a house for their family at the North Pole in Christmas Town. The child would be given a trip with Santa to deliver toys all throughout the world to the good girls and boys. Then they were celebrated in a great fair held every 100 years at the North Pole with games, rides, and tons of candy cane filled bowls. The elves shouted with joy, but then were filled with dread. They were thankful when Santa said good night and sent them to their homes to go to bed. Most were too tired to whimper, but one did mutter, in a voice so sleepy it sounded like his mouth was full of peanut butter. How are we going to find the very best kid? as he entered his house with closed eyelids. Nia Musa from Nigeria was always there to help her sick mother. Night and day she would help her sisters and brothers. She was poor but would give her very last dime. She had to walk a mile to school but was always on time. She always made sure everyone in her poor village had something to eat. She stayed up reading to her family to give them a treat. At the North Pole, all through the year, the quest for the golden child went out far and near. Elves and their helpers searched the world throughout every country and place for a child that cared for others with a pleasant look on their face. All the children were very good and some were quite great. The pressure was put on the elves to get the names to Santa by the assigned date. A huge golden stocking, the size few could believe. All the names were put inside, but only was to be called on Christmas Eve. Joffrey the elf was assigned Nia's case. He watched everywhere she went, from place to place. He watched as she walked two miles to give a thirsty man a drink. He watched as she washed all her family's dishes in the sink. Joffrey watched as she gave comfort to her mother who was ill in bed. And now, even when Nia was tired, she stayed up for her eight brothers and sisters and read. Joffrey was sure Nia was the best child in any country far and wide. He hurried back to the North Pole to give her name. He tried. Getting back just as Santa came out of his castle on Christmas Eve to call the name of the golden stocking child and who would achieve. The clock was ticking down as Joffrey ran down the lane. He tripped and fell over a candy cane. He pleaded with Santa Claus and yelled, please wait, I have one more, as the clock was near at zero, but only a second before. Time was up without a moment to spare. Santa then threw the huge stocking into the air. The stocking was full of the secret magic that makes reindeers fly. Suddenly, all the names flew high in the sky. 
only the chosen name would land at Santa Claus's feet, and the name would turn into a golden snowflake. The other names would just stay as paper sheets. Finally, a golden light appeared in the air. The true spirit of Christmas, everyone was aware. A golden snowflake landed by Santa's shoe. He grasped it in his hand and knew just what to do. The snowflake did not melt. It glowed as it rested in Santa's hand. Inside it was a child's name, the best in any land. Trumpets blared loudly from the elf band as Santa went up to tell all the name he held in his hand. Santa walked smiling to the microphone. He was so happy, in a true jolly tone, Santa's voice boomed, The 100-year winner of the Golden Stocking Child is Niam Yusa from Nigeria. Joffrey was so shocked, he just smiled. Santa quickly went back inside the castle to dress for the flight and soon the sleigh was off to Nigeria, way out of sight. To Nia's house, Santa, the elves, reindeer, and the sleigh did all go. To a small shack in Nigeria, only Joffrey, the elf, did know. The shack roof was too small for the sleigh to park. Santa put them down in a group of trees, the sleigh and the reindeer glowing in the dark. The house and the village were put in a deep sleep. Joffrey went into the home without making a peep. Joffrey found Nia fast asleep with a book in her hand. She fell asleep reading to her brothers and sisters about a faraway land. Joffrey sprinkled some magic dust and Nia became awake. She was surprised about the journey tonight she would take. She followed the elf out to the waiting sleigh and soon all were up and away. She sat with Santa and Joffrey and was told of her winning. Santa said, You are my golden stocking child, Nia, with his rosy cheeks grinning. Nia went all through her village and all through the lands in the world. Traveling in the sleigh, her hair did curl. She was so happy to be delivering the Christmas toys to all the Earth's children the girls and the boys. When the trip was over, Nia returned to her place to tell her family what had taken place. They all accepted the offer of a big home in Santa's Christmas town, a place of all smiles and never a frown. Nia's mother was soon made well by Santa's own nurse. Everyone got ready for the huge fair on January the 1st. The Golden Stocking Fair was full of games and rides, from the roller coaster to a giant slide. All were happy and attended each creature. Even the abominable snowman was a feature, offering tours of his home up Mount No Return with glee, putting an angel ornament on top the huge Christmas tree. Finally, on the third day, all went silent. Santa announced Nia's great award. Presented with a pure golden stocking full of the world's best candy and chocolates she scored. Forever offered in the Christmas Town Hall of Fame and a house next to Santa's castle on Santa Claus Lane. She grew up to become mayor of Christmas Town and was always happy and never down. That was close to 100 years ago so now you know this tale for the world to show. Be good as gold, care for all, and don't go too wild. You may just become Santa Claus's golden stocking child. The End